This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Recently, alcohol markers have absolutely blown up on social media and have become super trendy with there now being millions of people that know about them, want to get them, but don't actually know how to use them. But if that sounds like you, then you're in luck. So I've been using alcohol markers for over seven years and today we're gonna to be going through an ultimate breakdown of alcohol markers for beginners from the three different types of markers to how to blend them. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and without further ado, let's begin. So starting off, what are these magical and colorful markers that everyone seems to be talking about? Well, essentially, alcohol markers are a type of marker that uses alcohol-based ink, which is known for its smooth blending, vibrant colors, and quick drying properties. Now, unlike your water and pigment-based markers, alcohol markers dry quickly without leaving streaks and can be laid and blended to make amazing and smooth gradients without destroying your paper which makes them a huge favorite amongst professional artists and designers. However, the main downside that artists seem to face with alcohol markers is that they find they bleed straight through paper, which looks like this one essentially appears on the other side, and that blending with them can be very difficult, especially as a beginner, because there's lots and lots and lots of marker techniques. But don't worry at all, because that's what we're going to be going through today. So enough talking from me, let's start by looking at the different types of markers you're going to see. So let's talk about the different types of marker nibs because what I actually see a lot is creators online will suggest their favorite marker brands but lots of them actually skip over the fact that each marker has different variants with different nibs and the worst thing about that is that some nibs are much better than others so let's talk about the three main marker nibs that you will come across so you know which one to get starting out with the chisel tip. Now the chisel tip is the most common tip that comes with almost every single alcohol marker. And this one is really good for coloring in big areas due to its long and flat shape. So you can get lots of ink down in each stroke, just like that. And because along with its long side, it also has a slightly thinner side, you can get both really straight marker strokes, but you can also get some very thin and detailed marker strokes. So that is the chisel tip. But then we have the greatest marker nib in the world, which is the brush tip. Now what's so special about the brush tip is that it is actually flexible. See, if we compare it to the chisel tip, I'm gonna get marker on my hands here, but if we push it, it does not move at all. And the shape of the marker strokes is always going to be straight. But on the other hand, with the brush tip, see if we push it here, it actually moves. See, it's flexible, so because of that, we can get really, really thin strokes just like this. We can get really thick strokes if we put pressure down. And because of the shape of the tip as it goes from thick to thin at the top, if we flick it, we can get these really nice tapered strokes. And because of this, it is so much better for blending. And I'll talk about blending much more in detail later in the video. But by far, the brush tip is the best marker nib out of the three. But then we have the dreaded oh fine God. tip. Now, some artists say that this tip is good because it can create these really thin and precise thin lines, but that's all it can do. And I'm not gonna hold back because I absolutely hate this type of marker. And unfortunately, because not many artists talk about the different types of nibs, a lot of beginners will accidentally buy markers that have the fine tip and the chisel. Now you might be wondering, Shrimpy, why do you hate the fine tip so much? Well, as I showed you before, all it can do is these really precise and thin lines. It takes forever to color in big areas because of how small the, the nib is. And because it takes forever to cover big areas, it is extremely hard to blend with compared to with the brush. So my conclusion from the three different marker nibs is if you're going to get some markers, make sure they have a brush. Tip. Now that we know about the different marker nibs, let's talk about how to actually color with them and avoid that streaky look on your page. Alright, so now that we know about the three different types of marker nibs and the difference between them, let's talk about the technique for actually using them. Starting out with the chisel tip. So, with the chisel tip, I like to hold it at an angle where I'm getting the widest amount of ink on the page at one time. So, hold it at an angle where this line right here is perfectly flat against the page like that. Now, as for the technique, a lot of people, they'll go to color in big areas and they'll color it like this. But if we look closely here, doing this actually leaves a couple of streak lines and it's not completely smooth. And again, another mistake people might make, they'll color in this area and they'll be like, oh, I forgot this area up here. Let me just go back and fix it like this this. No, look how streaky that is. Because they dry so quickly, if you color in one area and then come back and draw on top of it, it's 
gonna look like this because the first area has already dried. So in order to fix this with the chisel tip, the trick is if you look closely, I'm actually overlapping each marker stroke almost entirely. I'm not coloring like this where I'm doing really wide strokes. I'm coloring much more closer so that each stroke is only slightly in front of the other one and that way it is so much smoother. Now unfortunately it's time for the fine tip. If I were to have to use the fine tip I would use the same strategy as I did with the chisel tip by slowly overlapping every single brush stroke now as you can see, the process of doing this just takes so much longer because of how small the fine tip is, but that's essentially the strategy. What you don't want to do is drawing like this, where each brush stroke is very far apart from each other, leaving these little gaps and areas between each one. Because if you've got to fix those, all of a sudden it is just so streaky and it is a mess. And then if you accidentally leave gaps again, we're going and we're doing these very close brush strokes and then blending into the previous area just to smoothen it up. Now, with the awesome brush tip, there are so many strategies and techniques, with some being a lot more advanced than others. But for now, let's just talk about if you are wanting to fill in a whole area using the brush tip. This is what it would look like if you were using the brush tip wrong. Now, what do you think I did wrong there? Essentially, instead of working slowly and overlapping the brush strokes, I was again doing these really wide and fast brush strokes, leaving gaps in between it and just making it look really streaky. Now, another common mistake that I see a lot of people make comes from the actual technique of blending. And when you're blending, you will do lots of these flicking motions just like this to create that tapered effect. But then people will think that that's how you use the brush marker in all circumstances. And they'll try to fill up areas like this, just flicking everywhere and making it really streaky. That is not good. In order to fill up an area with the brush nib as smooth as possible, you need to again be overlapping. So this is what it would look like. If we were to start here, I would start using a combination of both flicking and the sort of dragging motion like this. But honestly, I prefer flicking and see how there's all these like streaky lines here. We're just going back over them and attacking any of those areas that look non-smooth. And there we have it. Those are the three basic techniques of just getting ink onto the page and avoiding that streaky messy look that a lot of artists struggle to get rid of. Now, I'm an artist that specializes in markers, doodling, and design, and of course, making videos for you guys. But despite all that, I still have a lot to learn as an artist. And there are so many skills that I don't know yet that could help me make better videos for you guys. And that's why this video is sponsored by Skillshare. You guys have probably heard about Skillshare before. It's the largest online community for creators with thousands of classes led by industry experts all across film, design, illustration, productivity, social media, and more. So no matter what your current skill level is, whether you're a beginner artist wanting to learn how to draw, or if you're an artist like me that's wanting to learn how to sell their art, which I'm doing with Alicia Souza right now, Skillshare has classes for that made by the best of the best for you to join and learn. And on top of that, me and Skillshare have teamed up to give you guys a one month free trial to all of these courses completely for free. So if you're one of the first 500 to click the link in the description, that will let you sign up to a completely free month of Skillshare. So whether you want to learn a new painting medium, how to make videos, of your art online for social media or how to sell your art, Skillshare is the place to be. So with that, let's learn how to blend these things. All right, so in order to blend, there are three things that you need to be able to do. Number one is choosing the correct colors. Number two is using the outwards flicking technique that I'm gonna be showing you guys. And number three is executing the blend. So let's take a look at step one. So step number one was choosing colors with a similar value to each other. And this essentially means choosing colors that have a similar lightness or darkness to each other. Let me show you an example. As we can see, here we have a light purple and a light blue. And because they're both the light versions of each other, they would blend together very well. However, here we have the same light blue, but here we have a dark blue. But because they're very different in value, as you can see here, they will not blend well together. Now also, colors not only need to be similar in value in order to be blended, they also need to be similar in hue. And hue essentially means where they place along the color wheel. So let me show you an example. Here we have that same light blue as before, but here is a light orange. And even though they're both light colors, their respective hues, if we place them on the color wheel, we will see that they are very, very far away from each other. And that's gonna make it really hard to blend. So when picking colors to blend, I like to make sure they are at maximum two to three steps away on the color wheel. So getting rid of this orange, if I were to get a purple instead, these two would blend much easier together 
because their close placement on the color wheel. Now let's talk about step two, which is applying the first color using the outwards flicking motion. This is a super important one, so let's do it. Now, quick disclaimer, the outwards flicking motion does work the best with the brush nib because of its flexibility, but it can also be done with the chisel tip. But for the demonstration, I'm going to be using the brush tip. So to do the outwards flicking motion, all you have to do is hold your marker on a slight angle, just like that, then lightly press down your page like this and flick upwards. But instead of doing it slowly like that, we want to do it all in one motion. So press down and flick like that and see how we don't have that really condensed part of ink here. It's all just one smooth flick. And then you can get longer or shorter brush strokes depending on how long you drag the nib for. So if I want to get short ones, I can just flick like this. If I want to get long ones, I can go like this. So now let's create ourselves an example rectangle so we can get our first blend to look like this. All right, so here I've picked two markers that are similar in hue and similar in value. Let's start with the blue. So we're gonna be using our outwards flicking motion starting at the bottom to do some long flicks towards the middle. And again, making sure to make it not streaky, we are doing multiple layers just like that. Then with our other color, we're gonna go the opposite direction and come downwards towards the middle, just like that, flicking again again towards that middle area. Now, some people might stop here and be like, all right, my blend is done, but that is only the first step. Now we're gonna go back with our first marker and start flicking again into the purple area. And if you notice, I'm really focusing on flicking in that middle section. And then finally, we go back with our purple marker. This is our fourth layer, going back into the blue area. Doing very long flicks here. And look at that, look how smooth that is. Well done, you just did your first blend. And there we have the base of using and blending with alcohol markers. But that was only the tip of the iceberg of what's actually possible with these awesome markers. And because there's so many different techniques and strategies that I use in every one of my drawings, I decided to create a masterclass that goes through how to doodle, design, and of course, color like the pros. So registrations of that will be opening very soon. And if you wanna guarantee your spot, make sure to sign up to the waiting list that's also in the description. But let me know what you guys thought of this video. I really hope you enjoyed and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.